everybody. Welcome. We are here. Knowles 24-7. Exit Knowles position preview series. The game in Orlando at LSU is upon us, and we are here to preview everything. Today we are talking about the back seven for the uninitiated. That means the linebackers and the secondary. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about our thoughts, the guys that are coming back, some new guys getting mixed in. Oh, true freshmen that might play. Who could ever <laughs> think it? It's a whole bunch of stuff, and you know what? I'm done talking. Let's get to the film, guys. Yep, so pulling the film up now. We've got a game against Florida State and Clemson. Ooh. This might be uh, an so interesting one to watch as we didn't play handle the run very well in that game. Right. So I guess I I think one of the reasons why this film seemed attractive to me is one uh we can kind of see this the strengths and the weaknesses. So uh here you see, you know, pretty typical formation from Florida State. They're going to stick in this four-two-five with five defensive backs. They like to have a nickel in here. Uh, that was Kevin Knowles for the most part last year. Yeah, and it seems like that's going to be maybe Greedy Vance's job to lose this year. We'll see. Not going to talk any, have any conversations about depth chart or anything like that. But a guy that they've singled out uh, quite a bit this offseason as a player who's risen to the challenge and maybe stepped up there. Um, true freshman Edwin Joseph, yes, a freshman for Florida State, can play and be developed. Um, it's crazy to think about. If you've got narratives, we do too. Um, but so, you, yeah, freshman you, Edwin Joseph, maybe getting some time in there as well. Uh, a guy who's made a lot of splash plays and kind of flourished under the coaching of Pat Sertan out there in the nickel role as well. Um, so that's an interesting spot. I like. I think what we should probably do is maybe talk about the two linebackers since we've got a good look at the two of them there in that in that uh, shot, and they're only going to play with two linebackers quite a bit, right, Kev? Yeah, that's that's the majority of what they'll play out of. I I think you might see a little bit more three linebacker sets. I think they feel a little bit better with their third linebacker this year than than they did last year, but I think they're primarily going to be in in nickel. That third linebacker would likely be DJ Lundy, I would assume. Yeah, DJ he's, Lundy. He's been the he's been the third guy off the bench last year, or the first guy off the bench last year. And I mean, it would be natural that he'd be. It seems like from everything that's been said and written and seen, he's slimmed down some more. He's moving even better than he was last year, and he it seems like he's ready to step in and have a, a play a play a significant role for the team this year. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, I think you can see really here one of the strengths and the weaknesses of Kalen Deloach and kind of where you want to see him grow as a player. So, uh, you know, Clemson's just releasing uh, this running back out into the flats. So it's his, it's going to be his job to kind of trail this running back in coverage and be there for run fits in case mm -hmm. he were to get it. Uh, you can see that he's a step late kind of, being able to address this, being able to recognize this. Uh, so I still think he's learning some of these, you know, recognition skills as a linebacker, but you can see how he's able to make up for it because he does have pretty elite speed for, for yeah. an inside linebacker. That's a that's a tough play for him to ask of any player. He's got to play the run, but then he's got to try to cover Will Shipley, who's Clemson's best player offensively, hands down. Uh, running away from him. So uh, that's not an easy task for any linebacker. I don't know many that are going to be able to make that play, but he does a good job of running it back down. Um, you know, Kalen's ability to run sideline to sideline is, I mean, I think it's pretty well documented here by us. We've looked at a lot of film. He was asked to be um, a significant player in the spy uh, role last year. Um, then we're going to see that obviously in week one against Jaden Daniels running around. So it's nice to see that speed out of him. What uh, Bethune is the – Bethune's the one. He was not healthy a whole lot last year, got banged up. Um, I believe it was against Louisville, right? It was early in the season. Yeah. What, yeah. What, is, what affected him? It looked like it was more of like a maybe like a run-fitting issue. It looked like a shoulder or some kind. Like there was a noticeable decline, I think, in his yeah. game. And he was still serviceable. And credit to the kid for gutting it out the entire year. Mm -hmm. But it was almost like a Robert Scott situation, right? Yeah, I think it was a shoulder. And it was like he couldn't take it. He couldn't take anything on with that shoulder anymore. So he ended up misfitting some stuff because it seemed like he was hesitant to take it on. I believe it maybe it was his right shoulder. By all reports, he's ready to go this year. I mean, yeah, you can see him kind of hesitant to take on take on a blocker here. 
uh, Tatum Bethune, number 15. Uh, and it's hard to know kind of how aggressive they want him to be here. But yeah, there he's, I don't know if he's green dogging there or it's tough to say for sure, but looks like he's going to challenge Shipley, go around him, and then Shipley kind of lets him go. He's check releasing. Then obviously DJ does DJ, never throws a ball. <laughs> Kev's favorite player. Here's the loose dropping. Yeah, I was about to say a good shot shot of him. him. Yeah, this is his strength. I mean, something he's got to get better at is coming forward and making plays in the run game, finishing plays in the run game specifically. Um, I'm sure that Randy Shannon spent a lot of time working on that with him. How do you improve that? Is that a recognition thing? Is it a film study thing? Is it an innate ability that's hard to change? I I think it's a combination of all of the above, Trey. I mean, I I really do. I think it's one of those deals. Is that Derek McClendon dropping? Yeah, dropping yeah. On, on third and long, they're just dropping, <laughs> yeah, yeah. dropping eight. No, I, I think it's reps. I think it's repetition. You know, getting getting looks at it, trying to see it clean, trying to understand it. It's a, it's some of those natural instincts, and then just rep after rep after rep of doing it, and then understanding like how you need to fit and finish. Um, at times, at times he doesn't fit and finish the way he needs to, and he gets carried sometimes. I mean, he's got to be. A more physical player some of that's just putting a little more maybe getting his body right where they want it to be i know he's a player also who's battled some injuries in his time and look he's a hell of, he's a hell of a good player i would assume he's probably maybe going to be a draft draft prospect after this season um you just want to continue to see him taking that next step forward he's a little stuck there as you can see i mean this is, would be a something you would critique so it gets himself blocked because his feet are in kind of in uh in quicksand yeah, you wow. see the differences between the two of them, right? Tatum Bethune, you know, he might not have that speed that we just highlighted uh, with uh, Kalen Deloach, but he does a really good job of reading this this counter, fitting off the inside shoulder, and kind of stuffing up this play. Um, and you can contrast with what what you were just saying about Kalen Deloach yeah. just being kind of stuck here. Those pullers have got to be a, a giveaway for him. The, the, the what's going on in front of him. I mean, He's seeing down blocks with pullers. It's got to be a bit of a – that's got to be an aha moment for him, and he's got to find daylight. And he's just a little slow recognizing it. And he you think that maybe just day. relying on his athleticism almost too much, where it's like – it's almost – not want to say I, a detriment, but almost a little bit of a crutch at this point because he hasn't, he hasn't played the position at like a high starting level for all that long, right? That's the kind of thing that's – it's just eye discipline. Okay. I mean, I, I don't want to say for sure. I mean, I don't know what his – I don't know what his responsibilities are on, or on that play. So I don't want to be like, oh, he's wrong. But sure, I would assume it's eye discipline. But here's a shot right here. Like, he can't go under this block. He's got to fight over the top of this thing. Yeah, he, he goes like, – He's got to be more physical on that. And that's an area where he's been – I know that they've, they've worked on just him being more physical. You can't run under that. you got to go over the top of it. A lot of two, there was always a lot of hands on FSU's linebackers last mm-hmm. year, specifically during the middle of the season where FSU had some problems on the interior with Fabian Lovett out. I mean, yeah. I think that just with the upgrade on the interior of the line, you're going to get some better play from our linebackers just with all the all the clear space in front of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it'll give you that second of of getting to diagnose and and be a little bit, you know, slower to make a play. But here you can see they don't have the numbers in the box, right? So mm-hmm. you count numbers straight up, six on six. So uh, if if they block one a hat on a hat, you have to have a safety come make this tackle. Which so it's the their job isn't necessarily to make this play; it's to kind of gunk up these interior gaps and get him to either bounce it outside or just kind of get mm-hmm. lost in this. Yep. They do a pretty decent job here. Yeah, he squirts uh, through. I mean. I, I think, think everybody gets does pushed a, good, a little bit. Everybody does a good job of getting to a gap and, and kind of being there and fitting where they're supposed to be. It Mucking just, it up. It squirts, yeah. yeah, it squirts through. But for a minimal gain. Yeah, I mean, you'll take that. That's that's what you're doing. That's what you're hoping to mm-hmm. get out of kind of being in that light box. Oh, oh gosh. Couldn't get All right, there. Let's talk secondary. Yeah, let's talk secondary. This oh, is see, a we great... got a blitz here off the edge. What happens here? Blitz by Kevin Knowles. It gets he gets there in time. Doesn't make the play. Yeah, he's got he's got to make the play. Not yeah. that was his. He was another player that was injured with a shoulder injury last year. It's been documented. Um, 
I think everybody's kind of disgusted. Uh, and just too many instances like that occurred last year where he couldn't finish a play and they blow it. They, I mean, they clearly blow an assignment here. What happened? Yeah, it looks like, I mean, Dent, Dent tries to redirect the route. I mean, what do, is there a miscommunication? Why is this guy so wide open? Is it just well, a consequence of the blitz not getting home? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I, I do want to address that they've been working him a lot at safety. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, he's getting cross-trained. I think safety's a better fit for him. That's you don't good. have to be as directly physical. Like the first play we watched, he had to go against the tight end directly on a on a block out as a screen he won't yeah. have to do that as a safety necessarily it's more tackling in space so that that might be a really good move for him but uh yeah let's look let's look at the busted coverage i mean it looks like it, the coverage is not busted he just yeah. misplays it i don't yeah. know if he i mean i don't he's not expecting renardo to stay over the top of that he just he just gave up on it. Yeah, he just well, he just misplays it. Well, I mean, like it's also pat it, it's weird because it's he's going out of his way to make direct contact. So I mean, that could have been called pass interference, right? Yeah, it just looks technique wise, it looks he's way too physical here. And then, well, to be fair, they might be okay. hedging this bet, knowing that there's a blitz coming. Yeah, they they might be telling him, hey, be more aggressive with this coverage because mm -hmm. we're to let the blitz get home. Okay, that makes sense. Right, take away the easy throws while the blitz is coming. Y you don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. You're right. Yeah, DJ's got just too much time, and there's there's that's a pretty clean interior for him to step up on and and an easy throw to make, right? Yes. Yeah. One hundred percent. Why why These do we think why do we think that's going to happen less this year, Adam? With the guys that they have added, I think there's a lot more faith in the man that's coaching them this year. Personally, I've been I've been saying for a while that I thought that guy running that room was a problem and i'm not the only one that's been saying it uh, i know jeff cameron's been saying it bud elliott's been saying it like there's a lot of a lot of smart people out there that have been saying the same thing and uh i think that the uh, i think there's a lot more belief in the man that's running that room now than there was last year and they're going to find themselves uh trusting the technique trusting the coaching trusting their jobs and their in their roles uh because of that the communication was always poor to me, Kevin. And we, you, I mean, you talked about it. And you got everybody a little, a little bit of a hissy fit about the, defending <laughs> the bunch sets, right? Giving away state secrets. But I mean, that communication after a while, if it continues to happen over and over and late into the season, I, I do think there's some credence to something in the coaching isn't getting through to the mm -hmm. field, right? Yeah. To be honest, when I did that analysis, I didn't find that there was a ton of miscommunications, more that the bunch sets really let them get one-on-one -on -one matchups in space. And I don't, I just don't, I don't think that they were especially good in one-on-one -on -one matchups technique um, or athleticism. Do you think let us down? I'm, I, I think there was a little bit of both. I, I mean, I think you were pretty thin on nickel because Kevin Knowles was banged up. Greedy Vance was, was new for the team. Uh, teams could get safeties one-on-one -on -one and, and they're either young or, um, you know, kind of unknown by the end of the season. So uh, I, I do think that there's, so here's a bunch of set. Uh, we'll see kind of what's going on, but uh, I, I do think that there was some physical limitations you were dealing with, but I also think that there was just a general lack of kind of aggressiveness and that one's in these kind of situations good right there. Yeah. This, this is. Yeah. It's back shoulder thrown on another safety blitz or on another blitz from the secondary i should say was that cooper on the coverage they played a lot of man free last year though kev i mean it's, they did it, it's natural that you're going to get one-on-ones if you're playing a lot of man coverage so you expect the adam you expect any difference in the distribution i mean we don't know anything but just based on the pieces they added and some of the positive yeah, reports you think I that think we're gonna have some, a little bit of diversity of some yeah, of the I think, stuff going I think on the back be, end? i think it would make some sense but i also think with you know, Cypress and, and Green, who are two physical players, who uh, who look like maybe they're going to be the guys that run out there for the first snap. We'll see. Um, I, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I've been there, so I don't know. Just based on what's been written and said, um, mm -hmm. it would make some sense that those are the guys that uh, are are potentially going to be your uh, day one guys um, at the at the corner position. I think it makes some sense to play man with them. Uh, uh, you know, R Renardo Green is a physical, in-your-face type of corner. Um, and Fentrell Cypress is, is 
very much similar in that in that regard. So I think it would make some sense to play some man, but you know, you, you've got a lot of experience back there. They're wanting to they, they've talked quite a bit about wanting to create more takeaways. You can do that with man coverage. You can also do that with zone coverage. So I'm curious to see if it's something I I, I think everybody would agree. There's a need to find some more diversity on this defense and not line up and let the offense dictate terms to you so much. And that's happened in the past. And I right. think that that's an area they've got the guys. Now you need to go out there and dictate to the offense. What's going to happen. Well, you got such a good defensive line. If you can instill mm-hmm. any confusion in the quarterback, by maybe the, and we talked about it on previous episodes, cause we saw Fuller do it a, a decent amount at Memphis, different looks pre versus post snap, right? Like letting the quarterback yeah. think he's got one look and then completely go into another. What's going on here? A lot of room to run. I think this is. I think this is on. This is something that you know is another thing to watch out for when you're looking and evaluating the secondary. Is Shaheen Brown? He's a very talented, physically talented guy. I think he takes the wrong route here. He he tries to get inside of this this wide receiver. Yep. Kevin Knowles is slow to kind of stuff. Yep, and it. The combination of him going under and Kevin Knowles being slow to make this contact is what kind yeah, of leads to the I mean, it's a long, I mean, it's this is a long yardage situation. The Keem Dent just puts his head down and misses a tap. I believe it's a Keem Dent. I might be wrong. Here, I don't want to. There? Yeah. That's a Marion Cooper. Is that a Marion Cooper? Well, that looks like what you're going to find in Colorado. So. <laughs> What do we think of this? What do we think of the safeties? I mean, you talked about Shaheen Brown. We did notice a couple of missed tackles with Akeem Dent. Um, well, those are the guys that, were, that we think, they're, at least they've been written about, having some significant playing time this year. And the safety room was one that a lot of people wanted to add another player to through the transfer portal. Are you guys feeling – how are you feeling? What's your temperature of that room and just the entire secondary as a whole? I feel like the reports have been pretty positive coming out. I'm really here. excited to see true freshmen – KJ Kirkland and uh, Conrad Hussey. That's what I'm really excited about that room. Um, a lot of the pub's going to be about Shaheen Brown and uh, Akeem Dent, but I think those two are your future back there, and I'm excited to see them both. How, re- how, how quick do you think that future will be upon us? Right away, in my opinion. Um, okay. I mean, maybe not game one, but game two. I mean, Hussey. Hussey's a playmaker. Like that dude's a Ask ball. me, baby. Man, he's does he ball. love him? He loves yeah. the Hussies. I don't I don't think there's a lot of hyperbole <laughs> when they're talking about him. He's a playmaker. He was so at, at St. Thomas Aquinas, and I mean, that's a program that churns out a high caliber, high level prepared players. So I, I expect him to come in and make an impact. I mean what happens I, here, man? I think everybody was desperate to find another safety, and I I was kind of set on it, and I thought that dude's going to be ready to play. So you got one coming in, right? Yeah. Let it, let it play out. Let it play out. It seems like Kevin Knowles is taking to the position, uh, you know, in a cross, a cross trained uh, fashion. I, like, I think you're going to miss Jamie Robinson, but it That's wasn't like he was, a, it yeah. wasn't like he was elite in coverage. Like he was a really good safety, but it wasn't like he was a game changing safety. He, he just made a lot of sure tackles. He was always um, there. I, right, I'm with yeah. you on that. He was always there, and there were yeah. very few times he was a sure hand. He, he got beat very rarely, but there right. were outside of the run game and kind of the blitzing, and we, he could really freelance and like be mm-hmm. a Swiss Army knife. As a traditional safety, he wasn't, like you said, a, a true game changer, at least from right. the past coverage set. Like he did that really well. He made sure it didn't go for 50. Yeah, He stopped it is- at 10 or stopped it at 15, whatever. He did his job. And stopped it so that it didn't go any farther than him. Cleaned um, up a lot of the a lot of missed tackles in the secondary line. I mean, yeah. I don't know if this. I'm trying to think back to the season, but it seems like the missed tackles yeah. plagued that unit a lot last year. But the hopes are that your front is improved enough that he's not ha- that your safeties aren't having to clean up so much. Um, they had to clean up so much because they were so bad up front last year mm-hmm. with with injuries and whatever else. Um, well, so, thank God for that bad throw. The yeah, hopes I are. think this is a busted coverage on Jamie. To be this honest, this one right here. Yeah, I think he's supposed to have eyes here. Because otherwise, fun. you've got kind of a traditional box coverage. The formation screws you. It's a you've yeah. Got all this... Five receivers are on outside of the field. Yeah. Still, the formation the formation screws you. A little and ref, little ref pick there too. Eye, di- eye discipline doesn't help. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you don't see Jamie Robinson just like outright changing the game. I, I agree with you. He is he is a guy that was incredibly consistent, makes tackles like this as a round. I've highlighted a few times actually just watching through this film where Shaheem Brown does a really good job of being physical in the box, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. making a tackle up up top. I think they want to, they've traditionally wanted to keep things simple for him. Either like you're a box guy or you're going to be a deep, deep third safety. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he's kind of progressed, if he's been able to pick up a little bit of the nuances to be a guy that they can build more complex coverages around. Cause I, I do think that was a limiting factor with him last year. Big guy gets a hat on Lundy there. Another guy we're talking about there who popped in the screen was a freshman, Azari Thomas, um, played quite a bit the throughout the year last year and then had a kind of a ho home spring, it seems like. But now it's come out, maybe he was a little dinged up in the spring. But, yep. the, you know, everything Brendan's been writing about him and Chris has talked about and, and Dane as well. And Kev, who, when he's been at practices, it seems like he's kind of found himself this year. Um, I mean, yeah, you can see what you're working with here. He's a longer guy, one on one, backside of trips. So he's essentially on an island out here. Yeah. So I'm curious to see his progression again. He gives you a, That's another nice, corner yeah. behind behind Cypress and behind uh, behind Renardo Green. That obviously you've got old Steady Eddie, J Dub, uh, Jarian Jones, Doctor Love himself. Is that crazy to think of that? What you just said, if you would have thought about him like two years ago, though, because when he <laughs> yeah. is steady, there is. There, yeah. I mean, when he's healthy, there is a pretty steady level of production yep. there, and it's just yeah. he's, crazy he's to think become about a reliable it. piece for them. And everybody kind of balked at the idea last year, but he's gone are the days of him just blowing coverages and giving up big plays. I mean, he's become a reliable piece for them. It seems like maybe he can play some nickel. Maybe he can play out wide. Um, yeah, and we talked about Edwin Joseph earlier, Greedy Vance, obviously. It seems like Greedy Vance has really found his footing in, in that nickel role. Another scrappy, feisty, tough-nosed kid uh, yeah. um, that you can plug in it. there. And that's an area where uh, they needed to get better. They needed to get more physical in the secondary. Like, we're talking about Shaheen Brown and Jamie Robinson. Like, this game itself, they lost, they, they lost in part to – not tackling well in the secondary. We saw the clip earlier of Amari and Cooper. I remember a couple plays by Akeem Dent in this game where oh, they, they didn't. Yeah, this was. So, yeah, go ahead. You talk about AZ. Yeah, this is this is most likely a form of like a banjo coverage. So essentially, if they run some sort of switch, he takes the corner takes first guy out, yeah. the linebacker takes first guy in. He caps both. So. Um, in theory, if this guy goes inside, his eyes need to be on the uh, on the tight end out here. You can see, you know, the reason why I give kind of DJ Lundy the benefit of the doubt is because AZ, you know, is a, he's a true freshman here. So this happened a lot, though. Um, he followed him inside when he's supposed to switch onto this guy. If you recall, Kev, this happened quite a bit last year. I remember it did. talking about it yeah. in our film review. This was the knock on him. This This was why. I mean, this is how teams attacked him. They, they went after him in, the, in these scenarios with what with the number one in number two coming out type of deal um so and hopefully you're not going to be book was out on him hopefully you're not going to be having to put in true freshmen out there too much in big time situations like this where, where that could happen or at and, least yeah. work them in through like the beginning of the season uh you know what i'm saying and let let that coaching sink in and see a lot of these see see more of those type of situations and, as opposed to clemson your first couple times seeing it maybe seeing against mm -hmm. like an smu a little higher leverage situation lower leverage situation right i think akeem dent can be that solid piece for you for, be that consistent piece you see him here kind of they're they're moving to, into more of a you know cover three or man free look um he's a box player here so does a good job of make, making a tackle in space yeah that is nice that's a good play kev you've got to talk about q jones <laughs> have we gotten to the quindarius portion yet i, I don't know are. buddy we, we're, we're working we're, away 25 ish there, right? minutes in i'd say it's yeah. it's it's free o'clock bro you talk about whatever you want it's free adult swim go yeah, ahead so, man so quindarius jones he's a true freshman you'll probably see him kind of get trotted out you know when when florida state's leading they, they might try to rotate him in against better opponents just to see kind of how he does why what about him makes him so such a good maybe a good play right now at this stage in his career what does he bring to the table so realistically he's a six foot two 
greedy Vance. Um, he's 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 long. He's fast enough. I, I, he was a track athlete in high school, but his track times really weren't anything to write home about. Mm-hmm. Um, but so he he doesn't overwhelm you with speed. He overwhelms you with length and kind of physicality. So um, it's it's kind of hard to describe without his film up here. But he's very physical. Like if I were to compare him to AZ right here, he would have hands here immediately. He kind of just swallows people up. Um, so I, I think, you know, he's, he's a, a true freshman, so he's still got some learning to do when it comes to like having to do switches. And I think you can kind of become over physical, right? If you're, if you're yep. too invested in your receiver, it's going to be hard to see those switches. It's going to be hard to kind of cool. run some zone, Hold but back. He's a pesky, tall, long cornerback that I think has a oh. has a very bright future. Run it, run it back to start. While you're talking about Q Jones, because I want to focus on the linebackers there. When we, I'm done with Q Q Jones. Okay. We're, we're done. Good. Now. You'll see. Him. We talked a little bit about Tatum Bethune, but I think this is a good opportunity to look at it more. And I think maybe looking at the, the end zone view would benefit us more. But we can look at it here too. Just kind of what he does. I mean. That's nice. He's just a heady, understands where to be, understands where to fit, finds the ball. He just finds his way through all the trash and makes it, you know, gets his hat on the football. And DJ Lundy's a lot of this, very similar. And he's progressed quite a bit in that regard. But this is a play. This, this is a third and short situation. D line does a good job, not great. But those, two, you know, Briggs and Coop eat up three guys here. So they win there two, they win there two on three. And Bethune just kind of finds daylight. He understands where the ball is going to pop out to and gets there. And he tackles the ball. You know, we talked about Cam Deloach earlier. We've seen Kalen in those scenarios maybe not necessarily make the play or it squirts four for an extra half inch or half hour or whatever. An area where he's continuing to work on something that Bethune does really well is he stops the football when he gets there. Yeah. I I just said that. Here's one. You get a yeah. broken tackle, but Will Shipley's also an elite caliber running back, and he's well. In fairness to Tatum Bethune, he gets tackled here. I don't quite understand why you're not throwing that flag for a hold, but yeah, yeah. I, it's it's one of those things where they recognized, or at least Randy Shannon and his and his time coaching has recognized the hardest thing to teach is that instinct of where mm-hmm. to be, where to find the hole, and he's willing to kind of, you know, sacrifice athleticism yeah. for that on some level and Tatum Bethune is a perfect example. Well yeah. it's 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 the age old argument of like the 40 time versus the slower guy getting into to that spot quicker if he knows where to go the speed one, kind man. of erases itself. I don't I don't know how I feel necessarily about that methodology but I I've heard people argue it before. I think we're going to get an eye discipline issue here. Yeah. Yeah, he ever he ever he ever runs it there. His gaps yeah, Should right there. Here. And yeah, because you have Gantt naturally filling this this gap. Yep. So, so that, that happens sense to me. It happens, but and, well, and they've been very honest about it. They've been very honest about high discipline from their linebacking core has got to improve and continue to get better. And we see instances of right here, and it those plays cost you over the course of a, a big time game like this. So is yep. it pressing? Is it just like, why, why, why guess there in that situation, so, especially from a guy so experienced? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Don't trust the guys in front of me. You got the, yeah, Malcolm Ray's doing a fine job taking on yeah, this double got, team. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you don't trust Malcolm Ray. Maybe you don't trust Brendan Gant. You're trying to overplay the situation. Sure. Big play hunting. I mean, everybody's guilty of that from time to time. Right. But if he's in his gap, he's fitting that ball and, it goes for one or two instead of squirting for seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say against against the Oklahomas, the Clemsons, the Floridas mm-hmm. last season, that was a lot of your struggles. There's a good pass rush by him. Yeah, here you go, off a of blitz. On air on part of his game, but he 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 gets after the quarter. He got around he, the edge pretty nice yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. He, does, he does a good job of getting to the quarterback in these in these pass rush situations. So this is this is one of the Clemson became famous with this play. Mesh and go. The mesh and go. Yeah, whatever. So essentially it's mesh, but this guy's gonna take take off up upfield. This is one of the hardest one on one routes to kind of cover in football because you'll see one, you're running across the field, two, you're getting this little pick put on you, and three, you've then got to turn and motor upfield. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, you're running a while. 
and he does a pretty good job here. I mean, it's it's open and he could hit it, but I don't I don't know many people that would be able to cover that if you give the quarterback eight seconds to throw this football. Yeah. No, that's solid, man. That's nice from AZ Thomas. Especially like a kid healthier with more confidence, more reps. I I, I like the building blocks there. Adam or Kev, mm-hmm. whoever wants to jump in with some young guys in the secondary getting older with the infusion of new talent like Fentrell Cypress, also with the infusion of the true freshman. Do we expect like it may be some more? I mean, we saw some blitzing in this game. Do we expect maybe more of that blitzing? I mean, I think Florida State definitely improved their front. Do they need to blitz less? What do you think? What are some maybe some new wrinkles we could see out of the back seven with this with this improved unit of talent that Florida State's bringing back this year? Go ahead, Kev. You got a rye small. For, first, no, I got a rye small because this oh. is this. <laughs> I mean, I'm, this play is awesome. Um, by by the offense. I'm I'm sorry. It's okay, buddy. Uh, Ask in it. Go ahead. I want to see Norvell run this. This is pretty great. Uh, so the wing is going to look like he's running counter, get yeah. lost in this shuffle, and then release out in the flats. So that's exactly how you take it. We were talking about this linebacker needs mm-hmm. to trigger when he sees down blocks and pulling pulling linemen. <clears throat> well, if he's triggering too fast, you just release this guy out there, and there's no one for him. Yeah. Which is what happens here, so, Trey. As far as your question, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. They're in a weird spot. Like Adam Fuller has shown the tendency to want to play high coverage, keep everything in front, make you drive the drive the field and, right. and win with consistency. Um, that's, but that wasn't his tendency at at Memphis. His tendency, and it was only one year, so it's we've only got one season to go. And his tendency at Memphis was to come after you. He was blitzing. Um, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say he was one of the higher blitzing percentage P, uh, defense coordinators, but he blitzed pen, plenty. He liked to blitz from the secondary. He brought nickel blitzes. He brought safety blitzes. We've seen that here at Florida State from time to time, but we haven't seen it a ton. Um, you've got the pieces though now to line up and just beat teams. Um, I, you've got the pieces to line up and be more diverse with line stunts and. Ran, you know, in, in different coverages, and, and can just win um, win those battles with the pieces that you have now. So, I would say that <clears throat> situationally, if the game's dictating that they need to dial up pressure, that they will. But okay. I think that they're going li- to, I think they're going to line up and try to win with their front four, try to win with Jared Verse, try to win with Braden Fisk, um, a Dennis Briggs, a Pat Payton, try to win pass rush situations with those guys mm-hmm. and let this let the secondary do its thing and not give a big place because you've got an offense that should go score you 40 every game so don't screw it up yeah just if you can keep the the other offense from scoring two or three times a game you're going to win football games you're going to win a lot of football games so yeah. the bin but don't break especially when you have a defensive line you can trust it can actually be pretty elite Oh. You like so you like that 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 brand of complimentary football with how we think this offense is going to be. Try to drag the game out, elongate the possessions, maybe get some points on the board, but a lot more threes as opposed to sevens. And you think the offense is going to be able to kind of handle its end of the bargain? Yeah, I mean that's what that's what I would think. That that's not saying that I I think that they're going to be purposefully not the best defense they could be. But I'm of gonna course say they're going to prioritize. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're going to continue doing what they did last year. I think I think they have a team that's built more like the team that the, that would excel in this. Okay, so if they're going to do a lot of the same tactics as Gosh, last so year, by, sorry, I, can you're I? You're fine. Yeah, this is such a good play by Akeem Dent. So this is what I was talking about, where they do the 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 banjo, they pass it off. So mm-hmm. he takes the running wide receiver coming inside the corner, sees this, and uh, it's a split field coverage. So basically he's got to be on somebody on this side and he's going to man him up. And so he's going to basically be on the first guy, you know, deep and inside. And he recognizes that it has to be this. Um, and he breaks on it, giving help to Tatum Bethune, who's, you know, a linebacker having to have a wide receiver in space. So even if this is completed, it's for a minimum gain. So it's a good play by Kim Denton. So Adam or Kev, whoever wants mm-hmm. it. So if the tactics are going to be the same, 
what specifically about the guys that they brought in is going to make this unit play differently? Like what are like some of these plays that we've seen that are open? How, how are they not going to be open doing the same thing, but with different guys? Well, guys they brought in, I mean, you're talking about really just Ventral Cypress, right? Okay. How does he and change then, the outlook of that freshman. secondary? How does he how do, how do those guys change the outlook? Of this just secondary? think he's a higher caliber player. Like we looked at AZ Thomas who was a true freshman last year and maybe didn't quite understand everything that was being asked of him at all times for whatever reason. You're not going to get that out of Fentro. Like you're going to get consistent all ACC caliber deep, uh, secondary play out of him every game. Um, you know, you're not going to have an injured Kevin Knowles lined up in at the nickel all year long blowing coverages like i think you're just going to get more consistent higher caliber uh level of football he, he peeks inside again same deal uh, yeah, as the other time same deal same exact thing so they they obviously have a, ha, had an idea what he was going to do with action now the ball carrier was on the opposite side before so it makes i don't understand why he's sticking his head in there yeah, he well, comes they're, they're immediately. Both, they, the, him and Kalen both convert. Yeah, but Kalen's right? where he's supposed to be. And Kalen sees daylight. Like, that's he triggers and it's where he should be. Bethune is way out of position. And he's not as quite as athletic as Deloach to be able to recover yeah. like Kalen can. Yeah. So and back to back to the conversation. Like, <laughs> I, I think that you have a better caliber of athlete across the board, more physicality. Um and just more experience overall. Like AZ Thomas is a second in his second year of college football. So he's mm-hmm. going to be better. He's been because contrary to popular belief, they are developing guys. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's popular belief, <laughs> but well, like it's contrary to some belief, belief. Co- co- contrary to some I can't, belief. I can't, oh, I can't say the word that I want to say. That's okay. We, we um, know contrary to stuff. Um, I, I just think you've got guys that have played a lot of football in there now and guys that have had a year in college football in there now, and you can bring some of that really young talent up and in situationally to get them reps um, in a Hussey and a Kirkland and a Quindarius Jones and an Edwin Joseph. Um, And then, I mean, at the end of the day, too, you you should have a better D-line, and that takes a lot of pressure off of a back seven. And if they're doing their jobs in the run game and getting teams into more situational football of having it forced to throw the football and your offense is forcing teams to have to throw the football because they're up putting up points every drive. It just becomes you start dictating terms and that helps everybody. You want to see another Colorado play? No. It's flipping it. <laughs> Way too aggressive. You're supposed to sur- surf on them. So you're supposed to keep a hand here, kind of move inside, but you've got to be able to cover the 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 quarterback. Yeah, yeah just that locker in. room. Well, I think once again it was, and I I think it might have been a function of having a defensive line that wasn't at the level we think it's going to be this year. There's a lot of guys were fighting that they're just guys that look like they've been hit a lot in the secondary, yeah. trying to jump under blocks and and not fighting through it because they've been they've had offensive linemen on them the entire game <laughs> and they know they are. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think. And this, of course, this is the fun. What was it? What they call it? The middle something. I don't know, dude. I heard it eight million times. I can't believe I can't remember it now. The middle eight. Yeah, it sucked. I hated it. This game makes me mad every time I watch it. This is a tough one, but I, I do think this is on Bethune. I, I don't think he's having a good game here. He's late trailing off. Um, well, that's just a such a hard going, thing. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, that's it's hard to like. It's his. It's on him, but it's yeah. not really like a, a fault. No, that's just a it's a kook. Is there anybody we forgot? Did we forget anybody that we missed? I mean, no, I feel we we talked about DJ Lundy. Obviously, the young linebackers, Blake Nicholson, Omar Graham is the guy that they've invested a lot of time in, and I think you'll definitely see on the field. Justin, Uh, you might see him at at, quite a bit of pub. Yeah, Yeah. Justin Cryer. Yeah, that's a good point. Freshman transfer out of Northwestern. He's going to play a lot on special teams. Um, Who's that? I was saying um, uh, Justin Cryer. He's 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 one of those guys. He's just a practice thumper. Like you hear something and you look and you're like, oh, it's it's Cryer. Um, but Omar Graham, you you might see him play some, you know, Sam linebacker kind of. I, I think they like him in space. We saw that in the spring game where he did a pretty decent job covering space. Um, 
he's not built like someone you would expect to be to be good sideline to sideline, but I, I do think he has really good anticipation skills. I think they feel comfortable with him. So I, I think he's someone who's gonna get a fair amount of run. And then the secondary green, Thomas Vance, Cypress, Jones. We talked about all those guys, Dent, Knowles, Hussey, yeah. um, right Shaheen Brown. I th- I mean I th- what do we what do we what do we think? I guess as we start kind of winding down, how confident are you in this unit? And I want to compare that confidence now to maybe where it stood pre-spring. Because this was a unit, particularly the safeties, but honestly the DBs, because we we saw a couple of games like we saw against Clemson. It was a pretty shaky, it was a pretty shaky performance from that unit for a variety of reasons. A couple blown coverages here couple misplay on assignments there from the linebackers however flashes of brilliance flashes of the things that those guys do well do we feel more confident in that unit uh and how much more so like do we think it i guess if we had to power rate our, our confidence in the unit what, what do you think out of 10 uh, i don't buy the depth at linebacker though it seems lundy has come a long way mm-hmm. okay so that could be an issue if if one of the main two go down. You think? But I, I think I'm at like a nine for the for the back seven. Really? I okay. I think they're really good. The back I, seven I are just the linebackers. The back seven. It's the entire I'm that that whole, about it as a whole. That's what, yeah. how we've kind of packaged this. So I'm going to talk about them as a whole. I, mean, I just really like what you got in the secondary, and I think Pat Sertan um, has come in and fortified that room with his message, and I think that that's going to go a long way for them this year. Everything coming out of camp, Cypress has had a good camp. Um, Renardo Green is Renardo Green, super physical player. Not, I'm not saying he's an elite DB, but I think he's really good for what they want to do. Um, if, you, if he's your number two cornerback, you're feeling really right. confident. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and then it seems Shaheen Brown is, cu- is coming on now yeah. and kind of finding his footing as we get closer to LSU and as they start to game plan. Um, and I think Akeem Den is steady. Uh, he's a steady player. And I think for what they need, because I look, some of that projection of that nine is what you think the front's going to be. The front sure, so yeah. much for the back yeah. seven. Um, yeah. they, they, it's make or break. If guys got to cover for five seconds or six seconds or whatever, nobody's going to look good. Um, yeah. J- Jalen Ramsey's not going to look good in those scenarios. But if you're, Dictating terms with your front and your offense to score a lot of points and you're controlling the narrative of the game and the situations throughout the game with those things, it, every it just gets so much easier for everybody. So saying all that and what I think the every all the pieces around this back seven are going to be, I, I have them at a nine just because I think that they're going to be able – they're just going to be so much better coached and so much more consistent this year. And there's enough variety in terms mm-hmm. of like veteran leadership, talent – body composition like you have so many more tools and we saw the flashes of what even some of those guys that had down years could do so you add better coaching on top of that mix and it's kind of like the back seven that's exactly what adam fuller needs it to be to showcase just how good that front is kevin are you as confident in this back seven as adam is yeah and i i think when we had the conversation like that because you're the coverage guy that makes me happy (laughs) you're the passing coverage guy I, I think when we have a conversation about this, it's the exact opposite of the conversation we had about the defensive line. Okay. Elaborate. The defensive line, we were lower on them, mostly because we know that the metrics and how people are going to see them is going to be extra harsh, right? Because they're going to have to be the ones that have to hold up the entire defense. Right. So I think they're going to, I think they're going to, you know, What's what's funny is I actually looked up this. I just looked up the stats as we were talking about it. Florida State Adam Fuller's blitzed more every year he's been here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's interesting. Is like that he wants to do it more, and as the talent level increases, the aggression is also increasing. Kind of like a positive feedback. That's interesting. The correlation there. Oh, you, you think another? You think we're gonna have another uptick by the time we see at the end of this year, Kevin? Yeah. So uh, I mean, from. 2019 to 2022 it's gone from 33 to 37 percent at memphis he was at 40 percent. so they're pretty they're pretty close to their memphis numbers i think more than the like blitzing i i think what they're going to be able to do is play games right they're going to have guys veteran guys that they know who can take a step or two away from where they need to be post snap 
to give different looks to kind of mix things up. Um, Cause if you just line up obvious, like that's one of the things watching that film is that there's a lot of teams that just go between playing, you know, cover four and man free. Yeah. But if you're going to do that, you need to be able to show that, Hey, this looks like cover three pre-snap or this looks like cover two pre-snap or this looks like man free, but actually is cover four. And they didn't do that as much. And so now that you've got guys one more year in the system, I think they'll be able to do that. Um, I think that they're going to still try to protect the secondary and stop the pass. And I think that's going to make the secondary look good. So I think you're going to see, you know, what, what was their stats last year? Like they, they were top 10 and in, in terms of yards per attempt, um, I, I think that's going to continue and, and look even better. And, people are going to talk about how this is an elite secondary and it's be- because of scheme and because of, of Sertan and because of the talent. Uh, I think yeah. it's all going to come together and make, make them look really good. And I just can't wait to watch it all come together. <laughs> Guys, we don't have that much longer until we get to LSU is fast approaching. We've got some interesting stuff going on. Recruiting calendar is still off the charts. We got some guys committing and some big names still left on the board. Stick by with Knowles 24 7. I think on Sunday, I think we're recording our season preview round table. Holy crap, the summer's over. I'm ready to go. Guys, I'm amped for the secondary. I'm amped for this linebacker unit. I'm amped for this back seven. And I am amped as always. You continue to choose Knowles 24 7 and us three for your position previews. We love you. Subscribe. Remember, it's almost season time. Subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Knowles 24-7 YouTube. Subscribe to everything. The content will be fast and furious, and you are all our family. So we love you, and keep chopping.